Lenz's law, which essentially deals with electromagnetic induction, can sometimes be a rather confusing law. And that's because it deals with two different magnetic fields. So in this lecture, our goal will be to demystify Lenz's law by essentially describing what Lenz's law is, when we could apply Lenz's law, and what steps we have to take when applying Lenz's law. And at the end of this lecture, we're going to look at one particular example in which we're going to apply Lenz's law. So let's begin by examining what Lenz's law is. So Lenz's law tells us the direction of our electric current induced inside a closed conducting wire that is produced by a change in magnetic flux. So it tells us the direction of our induced electric current inside our conducting wire. Now, under which conditions should we apply Lenz's law? So let's examine the following two conditions. Once again, in order to apply Lenz's law, these two conditions must be satisfied. So condition number one, we have to have a closed conducting loop of wire with some area given by A. And condition number two, a change in magnetic flux should be taking place inside our closed conducting loop of wire. If there is no change in magnetic flux, that implies there is no induced EMF. And that means there is no induced electric current inside our conducting wire. So let's suppose that these two conditions are in fact satisfied. Now let's examine the three steps that we should take when applying Lenz's law. So remember, Lenz's law allows us to determine the direction of our induced electric current inside our conducting wire. So, let's begin with step number one. In step number one, we have to determine whether or not the magnetic flux inside the loop is increasing or decreasing. And we do it by using the following equation. Recall that the magnetic flux is equal to the product of the magnitude of our magnetic field, the area of our loop of wire, and the cosine of the angle theta, which is the angle between these two vectors. So for example, let's suppose our area remains constant, our angle remains constant, but our magnetic field is increasing inside our loop. So by this equation, if B is increasing while A and theta are constant, this entire product is also increasing and that implies our magnetic field is increasing. Likewise, if B is decreasing, this is also decreasing, and so on. So let's suppose we have determined that our magnetic flux is increasing. Let's move on to step two and let's see what step two tells us. So if the magnetic flux is increasing, then the magnetic field produced by the induced current points in the opposite direction of the original external magnetic field. Now let's suppose in step one we determined that our magnetic flux is decreasing. So if the magnetic flux decreases, then the magnetic field produced by the induced electric current points in the same direction as the original external magnetic field. So once again, we essentially use step one to determine whether our magnetic flux is increasing or decreasing. If our magnetic flux increases, that implies that the direction of our induced magnetic field points in the opposite direction of our original external field. But if our flux decreases, that implies our two different fields point in the same exact direction. 
So, this step is sometimes confusing because we're dealing with two different magnetic fields. These two fields are different fields. Our external original field is the field that creates our EMF. It induces an EMF which produces an induced electric current in our wire. And that electric current in that wire induces another magnetic field. So these two fields either point in the same direction or in the opposite direction. And that depends on whether our magnetic field increases or decreases. So let's suppose that we found out in which direction our magnetic field points. Next, we move on to the final step. In step three, once you know the direction of the induced magnetic field, you apply right hand rule number one. So right hand rule number one states the following. You take your right hand and you wrap your hand around the wire so that your fingers curl in the same direction as your induced magnetic field and then you extend your thumb and your thumb should point in the direction of the induced electric current. So now let's look at the following example in which we're going to apply these steps. So a rectangular loop of conducting wire is pulled to the right out of an external magnetic field that points out of the board. Find the direction of the induced electric current. So here we have our wire and this is our external magnetic field given by B which points out of the board as shown by the following symbols. So let's begin with this step by essentially determining if these two conditions are satisfied. In other words, if these conditions are satisfied then we can apply Lenz's law. So condition number one, we have a closed conducting loop of wire. So that's exactly what we have. And in step two, is there a change in magnetic flux? So if we are pulling our loop out of this magnetic field, then that means there are less magnetic field lines which are coming through our rectangular loop. And that implies that our magnetic flux is is in fact changing. So these two conditions are satisfied. That means we can apply Lenz's law. So let's move on to step one. In step one, determine whether or not the magnetic flux inside the loop is increasing or decreasing by using this equation. So in this equation, our B is uniform. It remains constant. And the angle also remains constant. In other words, we're not actually twisting our loop. The loop remains at the same exact angle. However, notice that our magnetic field, even though it's remaining uniform, when we're moving our loop of wire, the magnetic field is actually decreasing because the number of field lines coming through our loop is decreasing. So our angle of theta is constant, our A is constant, it's not changing, our area of the loop remains constant, but the amount of magnetic field inside our loop is decreasing and that implies that our magnetic field is in fact decreasing. So let's move on to step two. So we know it's decreasing, so we apply the following rule. If the magnetic flux decreases, then the magnetic field produced by the induced current points in the same direction as our original magnetic field. So our induced magnetic field points out of the page as this original external magnetic field. And finally, we apply right hand rule number one. So. We need to essentially curl our fingers in such a way around our wire so that that direction points in the same direction as our external magnetic field, which points in the same direction as our induced magnetic field. So that means we essentially wrap it around in the following direction. So this will mean it's coming out of the page. And so that means when we extend our thumb, the thumb will point in the direction of our induced magnetic field, which points counterclockwise. So. 
once again, since our magnetic flux is decreasing, the induced magnetic field also points out of the board in the same direction as our original magnetic field. By right hand rule number one, that implies the induced electric current produced by the induced EMF points in the counterclockwise direction in the following direction.